In this video, let me just show you how we can quickly start using Nectar without learning what a compressor does, what a gate does, etc. We can use presets and get started right away. But first, let me show you what I've got going on here. I have a couple vocal samples, and they sound something like this. It's very dry, very intimate vocals. And now let's just pull up a preset and see what we come up with. All right, so we have a couple options under pop. Let's check maybe rock and see if we have something a little more aggressive. We have a lot of different genres and styles that we can pull up right away. So this is called the Preset Manager. And of course, Nectar 2 comes with a bunch of really good presets. We can also add our own and delete any preset. We can also create new folders. So let's say I want to create one just for my presets. We can create a preset folder named Scott under Rock. We can just as easily delete that folder or delete any preset that's in that folder. This compare feature, I really like. So let's go back to rock, let's say, and pick one, hit play. Now I'm just gonna tweak some of these parameters and to get to them, I can undock this preset manager. Stick that over here and stick the actual plugin over here. So now I have the 60s phase preset loaded. I'm gonna tweak some parameters. So now we have something very far away from the original preset, but maybe I wanna compare that with the preset that I originally selected. That's where this compare button comes in. I can compare my changes with the original preset. And we can see that I've made a tweak with that little asterisk next to the preset name. So here are my changes. And the original preset. Now I can just as easily update that preset by hitting update. We can of course list these differently and sort by last modified or last used. And we can even change the folder that Nectar 2 looks at for presets. Here's the location on my hard drive where those presets are located. And I can just as easily copy and paste these, back these up, replace them, you name it. The next thing I wanna talk about is Nectar's metering. We have a peak meter and an RMS meter. The peak is measured with a darker orange. It's the one on top there. And it's a short-term instant view of our max sample value. And it's really good for determining if we're peaking. And right away, I can tell you we already are peaking over here in the output. It's turned red. Okay, we don't want that, obviously. So let's just turn down our master output. And we're in the clear. We can also see how that peak meter is being held just a little bit. Just so we can get a better view of where that level's at. Next up, we have RMS. Instead of an instantaneous meter, it's giving us an average. And we can see that in the brighter orange. Oh, 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 oh. 
Now, Nectar 2 has a sweet spot when it comes to the input level, and that is shown with this bracket here. Now, they say if we want the best to come out of Nectar 2, we have to make sure that our peaks are happening right in this bracket. So here's our peak level right here. Let's increase the input gain to get it within that bracket. So maybe something like that. At the bottom, we have a couple different options available to us as well. We can zoom in and zoom out from this meter. So we're, we're at digital zero all the way down to nothing. We can also zoom out and decrease the resolution. Increase the resolution, and we can really see what's going on. Finally, we can lock or unlock left and right gain. So right now, they move together. If we unlock them, we can move them independently. Now with any parameter in Nectar 2, we can simply reset it by double clicking. So double click, double click, we've reset it. And then we can lock the left and right input together. That way they move together and it makes life way simpler. And that's it when it comes to the presets and our metering. Stay tuned. In the next video, we will go over the overview.